All right, so we're listening to you. Many of you asked for my perspective on business shows like Shark Tank, like Undercover Billionaire, uh, like what Warren Buffett did with Goldman Sachs and what um, Marco Simonis did with his Tough Love on these type of shows. So by the way, just so you guys know, I love watching a lot of these business shows and TV shows because I get a lot of wisdom and power plays and it's like a laboratory every time you see these guys uh, do their thing and how they've made a lot of success in their business. So I'm going to provide a little perspective here on Mark Cuban's guide to getting rich here with his bit here with Vanity Fair. So let's start here in three, two, one. Let's go. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. And uh, by the way, before I get started, happy Thanksgiving, happy holidays to many of you. And I hope this is a year that many of you guys are realizing that the pandemic is absolutely exposed, that this is a rat race. And hopefully many of you decide to get out of it because the journey towards becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire is understanding and being clear about what you want and understanding you up and out of that rat race, and if you really want to get rich, you got to start working for yourself. You got to embrace entrepreneurs. You got to embrace capitalism. So let's take a look at Mark Cuban, a graduate of Indiana University, a Hoosier, and his guide to getting rich. Hi, I'm Mark Cuban, and I'm about to give you some advice on how to be just a little bit richer than you are today. Hopefully, hopefully a lot richer. I mean, I mean, you guys want to be a little richer, or be a lot of richer. When I decide to get rich, I want to be a lot of richer. Put yourself in the best position to be rich. The first thing you need to do is live like a student. Absolutely, I agree with that. You know, you got to be uh, in your business. You got to study your market. You got to study your competition. You got to study yourself. You got to live like a student. I already agree with this off the bat. When you get that first job, it's really cool. I remember looking at cars and thinking, ah, I want this car. Fortunately, I kept my junker. No, not me, man. I, uh, uh, my first car I ever owned was when I came back from a deployment. I never had a car growing up. As soon as I got into the military, came back from my first uh, military deployment, <laughs> $3,000 for a 1997 Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. Uh, wasn't studying money, didn't give a crap. I just wanted a car because I didn't have a car to begin with. So uh, I could have learned this a long time ago and have been a lot further along in my life career-wise had I started living like a student. You use credit cards. I remember bill collectors calling me every two minutes. You're better off using a debit card when you need to just not use cash. Uh, well, I got to disagree with Mark on this one, man. Thankfully, I had $5,000 in my credit card that I can invest to invest in my first direct mail campaign to put 5,000 invitations and direct mail to three different zip codes. And when I did that seminar and I earned $15,000 from that first seminar, I was able to reinvest another $5,000 into the next month's direct mail seminar that catapulted my career. And make a long story short, I was able to make a multiple six-figure income as a single father with putting money on my credit card and then use those points on the credit card to purchase plane tickets to go travel and go to different conferences to invest back into my business, to invest back into number one, which is being a student. Got to disagree with Mark on using credit cards. Credit cards could be your friend. Just don't unnecessarily use them to keep money that you don't pay off every month. And thankfully, I was in a position where every month I've charged credit cards, I paid it off and uh, continue that flow. And uh, there's a smart way to use credit cards and a dumb way to use credit cards. I think that's what Mark is trying to get at. But there's a lot of benefit from using a credit card the right way. Number three is save up six months income. Save six if months income. If you don't income, like your job at some point, or you get fired, or you have to move, or something goes wrong, you know, you're going to... Yeah, oftentimes, people try to live off their business too soon. It's good to have a lot of capital stuck, uh, stuck and tucked away. For example, throughout this pandemic, my, my business, my wife and I, we've never even touched a PPP loan. Right? We've never asked for an SBA type of loan, so we couldn't tell you how to fill out, fill out a business credit application. We've never done it in 21 years of being in business. Then what I would do is probably put it into the cheapest SPX, Standard & Poor's Mutual Fund that I could find. Yeah, Standard & Poor's S&P, okay, okay. Um, I remember when I did a reality show for MSN Money, and they make us do the reality show. A lot of, you know, 95% of the reality show, is uh, actual reality. I mean, with our honest reactions and helping people, guide people. It's called The Invested Life. You guys might uh, see it uh, still. It's, it's still got its own uh, YouTube channel, but uh, that was the first ever personal financial reality show that was ever done, and yours truly was a financial coach representing Chicago uh, in that reality show. But I remember them wanting to us to insert 
um, TD Ameritrade uh, in, in a conversation. And everything I talked about with life insurance, they, they edited out of the show. Don't know why, probably the executive producer's call. I wonder if Mark Cuban was asked to put the SPX mutual fund in part of this conversation. Don't know. But do I agree with tucking money away and putting it into an S&P 500 type of uh, uh, index fund where there's not a lot, uh, a lot of cost fees and expenses to a index type of fund? I agree. I'm not exactly sure uh, what the specifics are with this, but uh, I agree with tucking money and investing it. If you're a true adventurer and you really want to throw the Hail Mary, you might take 10% and put it in Bitcoin or Ethereum. But if you 10%? Do, you've got to pretend you've already lost your uh, uh, Yeah, okay. 10% uh, kind of high. I mean, if uh, you're an up-and-comer type of uh, entrepreneur and every bit matters, 10% is a lot of money to potentially put in Bitcoin and Ethereum to assume that you've already lost that money already. I would say 3%, 4%, maybe even mo at most 5 But putting money away as you're on a come-up, 3 4 5%, probably at most. By the way, don't take this as investment advice because I'm not giving it to you. But 10% is a large exposure to say, okay, I could potentially lose it in Bitcoin or Ethereum. A lot of exposure there to something that may not ever exist. It's so hard to make a return on regular investments that you're better off when you see a sale. So for instance, if we are, hopefully we're all using toothpaste every day, right? A couple of times a day. And we're gonna go through toothpaste every month, whatever it may be. You're better off buying two years worth of toothpaste when it's on 50% discount. That's By the way, sometimes when you go to Costco, if you break it down, you gotta buy a large amount of toilet paper and toothpaste or shampoo or rice or ketchup. And uh, you got to spend a lot of money up front, and hopefully it's going to last you as long as it can because that's a large, it's still, going to Costco is still a large expense up front to get something to last you for maybe six months to a year. But if it's on sale, sale, uh, if it's on sale, I don't see a big drastic sale, especially with Costco right now during the pandemic. But um, yeah, I agree with that. Um, just look for things that are on the um, clearance rack. I like the clearance, forget the sale rack. I like going to the clearance rack. There's usually a designated spot in some of these retail stores. It's got red tags all over it and 75% off. And just make sure you ask, hey, by the way, is the sale price 75% off the regular price or 75% off the new tag price? It's a question you want to ask as a consumer. An immediate return on your money. Any of your reusables, consumables that you have to have, when they're on a huge sale on Amazon, buy them, because chances are their prices are going to go up. But that's a real savings that you get to put in your pocket. Negotiate it using cash. I tell people all the time, if you're out, you're going to take a yoga class, and they want to charge. Negotiate using cash. OK, big, big reason why you want to tuck money away is because we are negotiating contracts. Uh, uh, um, it's kind of like, a, uh, if you ever see poker players, when they're able to buy the table, because they got the biggest chip, uh, uh, chip count, and they're able to move the table, it's gonna intimidate the other person. So, man, I, be, I may not beat this guy in this hand, but uh, I'll let him buy the pot, because I just don't have enough chip count to compete with this guy. Same thing happens here when somebody, especially during a pandemic, uh, when you have cash, and uh, this goes into actually buying business or even acquiring equipment from businesses that might be going out of business or downsizing, and especially a lot of people not thinking they don't need a lot of retail space, there's opportunity for you to take that cash and buy cabinets and buy TVs and buy drawers and buy desks and buy equipment for your business, assuming that you have cash, best thing, there without putting on a credit card, put it uh, on cash because a lot of people, if they're on the way out, they'd rather have cash because they wanna pay the extra credit card fee. Charge you $30 and say, look, I got 20. You know what, they're gonna take it. Negotiating with cash is a far better way to get a return on your investment. I used to love to walk through bookstores when there were bookstores. There. Yeah, read books. By the way, I think Mark Cuban's favorite book is this book right here, Atlas Shrugged, which I think is required reading right now, especially what's going on in our economy, especially with what's going on with capitalism and so socialism being uh, greatly introduced into our country. And and uh, the fact that socialism is even getting a lot of attention right now, you know, it, it's, it's, it's shocking to see what the potential of the country can look like. Again, read this book, Atlas Shrugged. If you don't want to read this mega book, go buy the DVD series. That, uh, that you can find on Amazon. But what an educational process of understanding the difference between an entrepreneur, that's the hero that's displayed in this, in this, in this book, Atlas Shrugged, see the, the, the downside of big government, the downside of big overregulation, and, and seeing what happens when gas goes up to 30 bucks, a ga uh, 30 bucks a gallon, not a barrel, a gallon, it knocks out industries. It makes so much other things that much more expensive. Everywhere, and if there's something that caught my eye, and I thought it can give me one idea, to spend $30 to give one idea that could help. Yeah, yeah, by the way, guys, you know, uh, books are the ultimate cheat code. You know, uh, it, like Mark Cuban's mentioned in here, um, uh, I, I like this new app that I just downloaded. It's called Blinkist.
Blinkist, great app, download it. It basically gives you not only the audio, but also gives you the Cliff Notes version of that book. So therefore you can unpack it in a very short period of time, 15, 20 minutes, consume a whole entire book, and then look for the different areas to add more meat and bones to it based on the chapters that, of, that give you more interest. But I like this app called Blinkist to get me through a lot of books looking for that one idea. Propel me, make my businesses better. It was a bargain. The only investment guide you'll ever need by Andrew Tobias it used to get me all fired up. I'll read hours every day because all it takes is one little thing to propel you to the next. By the way, if you guys want to check out the episode I had with the 10 books that made me a first generation cash flow millionaire, make sure you check out this episode right here out of those 10 books. Um, still my favorite 10 books as I go over these. I think I shot this about two, three years ago. Still my favorite top 10 books. Actually, I would add one, my mentor's book, Your Next Five Moves. Definitely a book made us uh, $6 million in five and a half years. Nice works. When you're nice to people around you, when you're caring, when you're empathetic, you're always gonna get more results. Running a company is not easy, it's hard. But the one thing that you can control in life is your effort. It's yeah, hard. nice works, nice words, a great attitude, just helping people around you. You know, as, as I wrap up this episode, I know where Mark's going with this. You know, uh, lots of times, often, oftentimes people think that, um, uh, you know, you got to lead with an iron fist or walk around with a big stick. And you know, I've gotten away and I've gotten ahead a lot more with honey than I have with vinegar. Even though I come from the military, even though I come from the Marine Corps, even though I come from a, a militant type of uh, I take orders and you basically say go jump, I say how high. I come from that background, but uh, running my own company and understanding that not everybody's in the military, uh, that there's civilians out there and people that are out there that are sensitive to harsh words. Uh, I found a lot that nice works, a good attitude of gratitude, encouraging praise and recognize people goes a long way. Um, your words means so much to your folks and uh, the slightest thing, there's a difference between being a jerk about it versus holding people accountable and making sure that they do their job. But a lot of those things you can handle with grace uh, and not ha having to be an a-hole. Work hard. And of course, work hard. With that being said, guys, I'd love to know what your thoughts. I would love to know what other episodes you want me to check out. Drop them in the comment section below. I want to know what your thoughts here, what Mark Cuban had said to as well. What is your color? What is your perspective? Please drop it in the comment section below. With that being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like, follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications the next time we upload our next episode. With that being said, guys, I appreciate you tuning in. The YouTube channel, Seven Figure Squad, that makes you think like a millionaire, helps you strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first-generation cash flow millionaire. I'm your Money Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.